What's up guys, I just wanted to uh, jump on here real quick and talk a little bit about what you're gonna see in this video here today. As we speak, we are three weeks out from the Seville Marathon. It's been a great block so far, I really can't complain. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like to be in this last stage of a block, whether or not it's gone well. Uh, generally speaking, you have you know one or two more big workouts left. What we're about to watch here today is my second to last big long run workout before Seville. So with that, knowing, you know, hey, I only have a few more of these opportunities to, you know, show fitness, improve fitness, and make a deposit in the bank, uh, it makes it feel like these pr these workouts have pretty high stakes. Um, but I think it's something that I've gotten better at as I've done more marathons of not like putting too much stock in it. Because even if this workout were to have gone horribly. I've, I've still had a lot of good work prior to this and you know, it's marathon training. You never know how your body's gonna feel in the thick of it. Or if this workout went the best it's ever gone, which it went pretty well, um, but it wouldn't change the goals or, or what I think about where I'm at. I just think it's, it's another confidence booster and another notch in the belt um, in this block. So yeah, I just had to kind of look at this one like, hey, we're just getting in the work, getting another one on the board. I did have to, you know, pump myself up for it. It's it's one of those where it's like, man, these are long, hard workouts, a marathon simulation, you know, you're just out there. And this one I was the first big workout I didn't have Bia in this block. Uh, luckily, Caleb was able to come in and, and help for a little bit and that, that made a big difference, but it just, it just felt like it was like a, I had to get up for this one. So yeah, um, one of the other things you're gonna see in this video is something I've been experimenting with a little bit lately. I know a lot of you guys wanted to dive into the uh, you know science of my training, uh, the the nerding out stuff. And uh, you know, there's not a ton of stuff that I do that I would say is like groundbreaking on the numbers world. Uh, you know, I'm not taking my lactate in the middle of these workouts or anything like that but uh, something I've been starting to do lately and paying attention to, just more so from a point of curiosity, is I've been uh, wearing a heart rate monitor and keeping track of what that's like within these types of sessions, easy runs, uh, other sessions, just to kind of get a gauge of what my heart rate can tell me about how I'm feeling and, and uh, the efforts I'm putting in. And so, uh, unsponsored plug, I paid for this myself. I paid for my Coros watch myself too, I don't have any sort of deal with them, but uh, I really like this product, uh, the Koros armband uh, heart rate monitor. You just throw it on like this, super accurate, super comfortable. You forget you're wearing it really uh, when you're running. And uh, in this workout, you'll see, you know, splits heart rate for each of these mile reps and such. And it's, uh, it's pretty accurate from what I can tell because I've worn the strap before and it's consistent. And so it's giving me really good data and something that I can look at to say, okay, yeah, it's it's good to see that, you know, as this run goes on, my heart rate it naturally elevates as paces feel more intense. I can see that pattern and hopefully we'll be able to incorporate that into finding out what effort needs to be put in on certain days, right? So if you get enough of this data, you can kind of go, okay, heart rate tells me I'm working harder than I should be at this pace. Maybe I should back off. So that's kind of the idea of looking at it in these types of workouts and you know we'll see how much we use this going forward ryan does seem to be pretty interested in it but it's more just a thing of curiosity and just another data point to uh, check in on how we're doing so hope you enjoy this video and yeah i've really appreciated all the support cheers warm up at 603 pace right, be back in less than 60 minutes <laughs> all right <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm Caleb Webb, part of the Ryan Hall little group that we got here going on. Uh, I'm going to be joining Roy for part of this uh, this last big marathon uh, sim that he's got. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to get back in shape and stuff. And so just want to come out here and help him out and hopefully we'll have a good day. All right, so as we speak right now, we are three weeks out from Seville. This is kind of the second to last big session of the build. Um, a classic marathon simulation so we've already done a video doing this exact type of workout but it was early in the block and a little bit of different uh, touch to it so for this one we are gonna do the same beginning two mile warm-up 10 miles at a moderate pace 550 to six minutes ish and then we will do 10 miles at marathon effort whereas last time we did eight but this time we're gonna add a little variation where I'm gonna go 
a little faster, a little slower every other mile. So I'm going to touch and go a bit uh, with a mile ideally between 455 to 5 flat and then a mile at 505 to 510 just kind of touch and go and again we'll see what those sh splits shake out to be but the point is to kind of practice pressing relaxing pressing relaxing sometimes in a marathon uh one of the hardest things is when you when you're going through something letting off the gas just a touch and seeing what that does to your body and seeing what that does to collect yourself so this is a skill that I like to practice in uh, marathon workouts quite a bit and sometimes Ryan will prescribe it into the workout like we have today so uh, should be a fun one uh, this is peak week for me so highest mileage week in my build and uh, I'm excited for this workout this should be fun so look a little cold but here we go Good. Water, fluid? Yep, water. Water. Nice. Yep. You just dump it. Yeah. Five forty five pace. Conversational. Great. Good Dead, yeah, I just got to get to the halfway point feeling smooth. That's the big thing here. Yeah, it's like I didn't realize I was fighting the wind for a couple miles till I turned and ran like a unintentional 535. Oh, okay. Just like, oh, yeah, there was a headwind. It's <laughs> good enough. I mean, yeah, it'll feel better coming back, I think, for you too, especially because versus not like just like a natural just crossbow. Yeah, well, and you will feel that. You'll think you're getting a headwind for part, parts going back, too. Yeah. Okay, 10 miles done, 539-ish, maybe 540 average. We'll see what the official uh, chip time says. But yeah, 56, 30 something for 10 miles. Felt pretty good. Let's see if I pay for it. I was checking it during that 10 mile. I stayed upper 130s, low 140s, with the exception of like the occasional uphill or, or headwind where I'd peak out in the 145-ish. But I bet my average for that 10 was under 140. We'll see when we officially upload it, but it felt good. I, mean, I generally have a pretty low heart rate, so those numbers don't really mean all that much. Like even on this marathon pace stuff, I'll likely only get up to 160, 165, which is low for marathon effort, but it feels hard, obviously. Caleb's gonna help me out. All right. You go if I can, and then I'll pack you.
Beautiful. Nice man. Honestly, I uh, I thought I was gonna come undone a bit between four and six, but uh, I like didn't look at my watch for a second. And I looked at the all night too fast. Like when I was thinking I was hurting, I was like, "All night going too fast." Like I'm good. It's basically 507 for the 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 conservative miles, the even ones, and then for the odds. I had 459, 5 flat, 458, 456, 456. So on a, on a kind of breezy day, I think, I mean, you can see the trees moving and stuff. It's like on and off 10 mile an hour, 15 mile an hour winds. So I'll take it. I mean, it's not as good a weather as the last time B and I did a similar session and I hit pretty comparable splits for a little bit longer. So I think that shows that fitness is improving. And uh, yeah, that's all you can really ask for. Three weeks to go. Go Ravens. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, if you can hear me, save us, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, if you can hear me, save us. <laughs> I just wanted to share a little bit of my marathon training do's and don'ts is kind of what how I started writing this down. So I was thinking about this over the last week or two. Uh, call them link letters, laws, Rory's rules, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, th these are just my kind of pieces of advice for anyone marathon training. So here are the do's first. Increase your frequency of meals three times per day. Leaves you susceptible to underfueling, which can lead to caloric deficit and puts you at risk for injury and nutrient deficiency. This is something I talked a little bit about in my last day in the life. Uh, as you know, I eat about five meals a day and that's at a minimum, you know, with snacking included. Um, Take a day off, that's a do. It doesn't have to be every week, it doesn't have to be completely off. You can choose what this looks like, but dedicate a day to absorbing your training, resting your body, and charging up for the next big effort. Uh, another do is to lift regularly, and do so with purpose for marathon training. Uh, marathon training is super repetitive, running miles upon miles makes you, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to have imbalances and weaknesses. Running is, uh, one motion sport so it's really good to get in the weight room and and work on anything that may become deficient with the repetitive motion of running um the don'ts of marathon training don't get caught up in goal paces uh this is something that is easy to do up here in flagstaff because it's almost impossible to run all your goal paces but a lot of people i coach often want to run their yeah, don't, don't get caught up in goal paces. Uh, the better skill is learning the effort. A lot of people I coach and talk to about marathon uh, goals, they, they, they have this time in their mind, you know, like let's say they want to break three hours. And then they get the split that they have to run for sub three hours and they want to do that every time they're doing marathon work. Um, I just don't think that's necessary. I think it's more important to know what marathon effort feels like and let the fitness build and let the race be a experiment to see what your body's capable of on the day. In marathon training, you shouldn't feel as good as you will on race day. So having uh, the, the need to hit that pace every time, just it's unnecessary and it just puts you in a bad spot to overtrain. Uh, don't force mileage goals uh, each day should have a purpose and there's a time and place to get the miles in I usually start each day with a, a range of distance that I want to hit uh, it helps to go by minutes for me you know so say I want to do 70 75 minutes 
um, that can be 10 miles, nine miles, but sometimes even I'll get out there and do an out and back and I'll just be like, okay, today I feel good. Let's go five more minutes out. Let's go 10 more minutes out. Or if I don't feel good, I'll pull the plug early. So uh, just kind of don't set a weekly mileage goal on Monday and think that you have to hit that. That's just not a, a wise way to respect your body's recovery. Uh, and then last but not least, don't stop doing speed. Uh, in this journey on YouTube, I started with a sub four mile attempt and that was because I, I value what speed can do for a marathon build and uh, it's something I'm constantly touching on with either strides, hill repeats, uh, 5k work within the marathon block, but never stop doing speed in marathon training. A lot of people want to just focus on the marathon work and they go 12 weeks without any specific uh speed work and I think that that really makes marathon pace feel harder than it has to I feel the best when I'm consistently doing 5k work mile work and then you know your marathon effort really does feel like a jog